we're exploring something called quaternion process theory. Quaternion process theory. Yeah, this isn't about algorithms and data sets. It's about language no. as a living process. Yeah. The software architect we're diving into, he argues that's the key to understanding real intelligence. Hmm. Interesting. So how does he how does he approach that? He thinks those old metaphors for the mind, like comparing it to a computer, they're holding us back. Yeah, I can see how that limit our thinking. Exactly. And that's where quaternion process theory comes in. It's like this almost like a map of how AI could actually evolve. He visualizes it with these overlapping circles, like a Venn diagram. It starts with artificial intuition. OK, so like basic pattern recognition. Exactly. Think deep learning. AI can spot a cat in a photo, but it doesn't really get what a cat is. Then it moves to artificial fluency. This is where things get really interesting. Like GPT-4. Bingo. Yeah. GPT-4 is like the poster child for artificial fluency. It's eerily good at sounding human. But he calls this leap time travel development. And honestly, that blew my mind a little. Time travel. I'm intrigued, but also what? It's not literal time travel, of course. Yeah. But the idea is by feeding these language models tons of programming code, we've given them a shortcut. I see. So they're bypassing the steps biological intelligence goes through. <laughs> totally. It's like they're borrowing knowledge from the future in a way. But here's the thing. He says, even with all this progress, there's a core ingredient missing. Abstraction. So even though AI can mimic patterns, it doesn't truly grasp the deeper meaning behind them. Exactly. And to explain that gap, he takes us even further into the future of AI to artificial empathy. Artificial empathy. He talks about fast empathy, which is more like a surface level reaction, and slow empathy, which is deeper, more like true understanding. Okay, I'm starting to see the distinction. To illustrate, he uses this really relatable example. That aha moment you get in the shower when seemingly random ideas suddenly click into place. Oh, yeah. Those shower thoughts can be profound. Exactly. He says that's a glimpse into slow empathy, that unconscious processing, those unexpected connections. It's like our brains are doing all this work behind the scenes. Fascinating. And to help us picture all of this, he brings in this really cool analogy, a tensegrity structure. A tensegrity structure. You know those sculptures that look like they're defying gravity? They're held together by this perfect balance of tension and compression. Oh, yeah, those are wild. They almost look like they're floating. And he's suggesting that real AI might need a similar kind of balance. Logic and intuition, rigidity and flexibility, all working together. It's like finding that sweet spot between structure and freedom, isn't it? Exactly. And it gets you thinking, maybe true AGI, artificial general intelligence, isn't just about what we typically imagine. It might not be about building bigger, faster computers. It's about understanding those things we often overlook. Intuition. Empathy. And this is where it gets really interesting. He brings up pattern languages. Pattern languages. What exactly are those? So it's this idea borrowed from feels like architecture and software design. Interesting. Imagine taking all those unspoken rules, all that intuitive knowledge within a specific field, and turning it into a shared language. That's a pattern language. It's about capturing best practices, design principles, even those subtle, almost aesthetic sensibilities. So like a secret codebook for creativity, almost. Exactly. And he believes that developing these robust pattern languages for AI, that could be the key to unlocking those higher levels of abstraction. Instead of just mimicking, AI could start to understand the why behind things. Precisely. Now, throughout this whole talk, he keeps dropping these little hints about the limitations of our current approach to AI. Like what? He even brings up geometry at one point. Geometry. He talks about how even though we can define a perfect circle easily, replicating it perfectly in real life is basically impossible. There's always that gap between the idea and the reality. Because real world circles, they're not actually perfectly circular. Right. It's like we can get close, but there's always that little bit of doff centeredness. It makes you wonder, even if we could build these super powerful computers, are there just some things that are fundamentally beyond AI? It's a big question, and I really appreciate that this guy doesn't shy away from that. He doesn't pretend to have all the answers. Instead, he pushes us to look at things differently. Mm -hmm. Intelligence, consciousness, even reality itself. It's a lot to process. But he does offer some clues, like when he mentions paradox. He talks about how important paradox is to human thought. Oh, absolutely. That part really stuck with me. He mentions paradoxical models as this key area for future AI research. So instead of just black and white thinking, AI needs to embrace contradictions. Exactly. It's like our brains are messy. We hold all these seemingly opposite ideas at the same time. 
maybe AI needs a bit of that to truly, to truly level up. To become more human in a way. Huh. Okay. But back to those pattern languages for a sec. I'm still trying to fully wrap my head around how those would actually work in AI. Can you give me an example? Sure, sure. Let's say we want to build an AI that can design buildings. Okay, I like where this is going. Instead of just feeling it a bunch of blueprints, we'd want it to understand those unspoken rules of architecture. Yeah. Like how sunlight affects the feel of a room, how people naturally move through a space. Even things like the emotional impact of different design choices. Exactly. All those things, those are part of the pattern language of architecture. We're not just teaching AI the science of building, we're teaching it the art too. Exactly. And if we can actually translate these pattern languages into a format that AI can work with, it could completely change the game. AI could go from mimicking creativity to actually participating in it. Right. And this isn't just limited to like creative fields either. Oh, interesting. So we could apply this to other areas. Absolutely. Yeah. Any domain where there's a lot of unspoken knowledge from scientific discovery to heck, even writing a good podcast script. Okay. You got me there, but I see what you mean. This is about understanding the underlying code of intelligence, how we connect ideas, how we solve problems. It all circles back to quaternion process theory. It's not just about stages of development. It's about those core building blocks of intelligence, of what makes us, us. And this guy, he's not afraid to go there to those really big questions. What if AI does develop this slow empathy? What if it starts experiencing the world in a way that's closer to our own intuition? No, wouldn't that be something? Could AI ever understand joy or sorrow? or the awe of looking at a starry sky. And if it could, what would that mean for us? Would we see it as just a machine or something more? Big questions. Well, and they're not just philosophical anymore, are they? They're becoming more and more relevant as AI keeps advancing. That's what I find so exciting about quaternion process theory. It really is exciting, but it's a lot to take in. It's almost a little daunting. Definitely makes you think. But that's the beauty of this quaternion process theory. It's not just about AI, it's about us too. What does intelligence even mean? It's not so simple anymore. It's more than just processing power, that's for sure. Yeah, exactly. And it's so easy to get caught up in the race to build more powerful machines. But this theory, with its focus on things like empathy and intuition, it's like a reminder. A reminder. That those things, those uniquely human qualities, they're not weaknesses. They're what make us capable of such amazing things. Creativity, compassion, really understanding the world around us. Exactly. So yeah, maybe the real key to AI isn't just building smarter machines. Maybe it's about understanding ourselves better in the process. And maybe, just maybe, somewhere along the way, we'll discover that the line between artificial and real intelligence, maybe it's not so clear cut after all. So to everyone listening, if you're as intrigued by this quaternion process theory as we are, we encourage you to check out the video. It's a wild ride. And remember, keep asking those big questions. What does it mean to be intelligent? What does it mean to be human? Because those questions, they're only going to become more important as we move further into the age of AI.